What if I told you that this car right next to me, this car that seats seven adults, is actually cheaper than a Volkswagen Up? And no, I'm not talking about the electric Up, just the regular Up. I know it's hard to imagine, right? But it actually is. This is the Dacia Jogger, and this is by far the cheapest seven-seater SUV in Europe. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it. I'm gonna take you through the interior, the exterior, and we're gonna take a drive in the cheapest seven-seater SUV in Europe. This Jogger is definitely not the first fairly big car that Dacia is offering for a fairly reasonable price. Uh, before this you had the Logan MCV and the Logi, which were both also 7-seater cars that weren't that expensive. Now as you can see, this Jogger has a bit of a weird shape to it. It's not really an MPV, it's not really a station wagon and it isn't really an MPV. It's a bit of a combination of all three of those forms. It does have the length of a station wagon, it does have the space of an MPV, and it does have the height of an uh, SUV, and it also got all this plastic cladding around the wheel arches that make it look like an SUV. Now I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the exterior of this car in just a moment, uh, because first let's talk pricing, because that makes this car really special. Because how much do you actually have to pay for the cheapest seven-seater in Europe? Well, it kind of depends on where you live. At the moment I'm in France right now filming this car and here the car starts from 15,000 euros which is about 600 euros cheaper than a Volkswagen Up. In Romania where Dacia is from it's actually even cheaper. It starts at around 14,000 euros and in the UK it starts from 15,000 pounds. These are the prices for the five seater by the way. If you want to have the seven seater so with the third row option you have to pay a thousand euro extra. There are three trim levels. You got the Essential, the Comfort and the Extreme. And there are only two motor options with either 100 and 110 horsepower. Later on in 2023, there will also be a hybrid powertrain that produces 140 horsepower. But I'm gonna talk more about motor options later on when I'm gonna take this car for a drive in just a minute. Because first, let's do a little tour around the Jogger. As you can see, it's a pretty big car. It's four and a half meters long, making it the biggest Dacia that you can get at the moment. It also has a pretty long wheelbase, so the space between the front and the rear wheels, which is 2.9 meters. Then let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is the front end of this car. If you're familiar with Dacia models, uh, you might say this front end of the car looks completely the same as a Sandero Stepway, and that is because it actually is. Up until here, up until the B pillar, this entire front end of the car is literally just a Sandero stepway. Which is a pretty clever way to save a lot of money on design and production costs. You can also see this line going up here at the B pillar, which kind of gives it away that you get a completely new car from here on out. Now Dacia gave the Sandero stepway a facelift only last year, so the front end of the car is basically completely new. So you get this Y-shaped LED uh, daylight running lights, and you get these chrome elements in the grill as well. Let's also have a quick look at the design at the back of the car. Uh, at the back of the car the design is completely original, it isn't taken from a different Dacia model. Although I do have to say that these rear lights do look a little bit familiar. Now there's a reason for that, not because it has anything to do with Volvo, but because uh, Dacia wanted to get the tail lights basically out of the way. Because they wanted to get a really big opening here, so the tail lights had to get all the way to the side of the car, so you automatically get this what kind of shape. Now let's look at the cargo space, because that's well a really important feature of this car. Um, as I said, you got a really big opening here, so you got a really big tailgate as you can see it's massive and now you get this massive hole here this really big opening which is almost completely square so it's really easy to fit in like i don't know a refrigerator here if you have to move houses because there's just a lot of opening space here now as you can see i've got the five seater here with me today which offers 700 liters of cargo space and if you fold the rear seats down you got 1800 liters now if you have the third row seat option and you only have 160 liters left here, obviously a lot less than the five seater, but you can easily fold down the rear two seats. And I will demonstrate that right now because I already have driven that car. Now, as you can see, you can really easily fold them down and then fold them up so you get a little bit more space. And if you want even more space, it's really easy to get the seats out of the car. You can just 
click them down below and just remove them all entirely from the car. And that's just really handy if you don't need the third row option all year round. You can just get them out of the car, leave them in the garage for storage and get them back in the car very easily when you wanna haul more kids or go on a big holiday with the entire family. If you need even more cargo space, for example, if you go on a big family trip, you can easily put a roof box on top of the car, but you don't need roof racks. I'll have to explain that. You see, you can open these plastic tabs here, and if you undo a couple of screws, uh, then you can move these bars 90 degrees and they will form your roof racks. And that's a really clever design feature by Dacia, and this way, well, you never even have to think about uh, bringing your roof racks because they're already on your car. Here at the second row, the bench is made out of three uh, separate seats, so you can comfortably fit three adults here, uh, let alone three kids. You get a 12 volt outlet here, no USB ports, only this 12 volt outlet, so you have to buy a USB adapter here so your kids can charge your phone. Uh, you also got electric power windows here in the back. Uh, you can even get a tray table here. It's a pretty clever design. You can pop it up, then pull it towards you, and then you even have a cup holder. So if you have kids, that's definitely something I would recommend. If you have really small kids, there are also two ISOFIX connections on the outer seats, so this one and this one. The seats in the car are in theater mode, as Dacia likes to call it. Uh, that basically means that the second row is a little bit higher up than the seats in front of me. And if you have the third row option, uh, those seats are a little bit higher than the second row. So in this way, you get a little bit more room for your legs and you get a better look out of the window in front of you. Now, like I just said, this is the five seater car I've got right here. Uh, so no third row option, but I did try it earlier on that car and made some footage of it. And I'm gonna show you that right now. Now I was really surprised by the room that you get here all the way in the back. Usually only kids can fit here, even in large SUVs like a Volvo XC90 or Kia Sorento, there's only ever space for small kids. But not in the Dacia uh, Jugger. I could easily fit in there. I'm 1 meter 80, so I'm not the tallest person, but definitely not the shortest. There was plenty of headroom, even with the theater style setup. And there was also enough room for my legs. Now, my knees were hitting the seat in front of me, but not really that hard. It wasn't any, it wasn't uncomfortable and I could easily sit there for at least a couple of hours if I had to. There are a couple of amenities all the way in the back. You get a pop out window to get some fresh air. Uh, there's a light here. There's a 12 volt connection again. You even get cup holders and there's also a little armrest for each person. Like I said in the beginning of the video, the entire front end of the car is basically an exact copy of the Sendero Stepway. And that's basically the same story with the interior. It's completely the same as you get in a Sandero Stepway. So that means a pretty basic interior with a lot of hard plastic, but that doesn't mean it doesn't look good. Fortunately, Dacia is really good with plastic. They know how to handle it. They know how to make it look pretty decent. And so that's exactly what they've did in this car. Obviously you get what you pay for, but I do have to say, it all looks kind of nice. You get this fabric strip here on the dashboard that runs all the way into the armrest in the doors. Obviously, I'm not driving the most basic version here. You do have to keep that in mind. You get these stitches here on the seats with this nice pattern here as well. So all in all, it doesn't look that bad to me. As standard, the essential version, which is the basic version, is equipped with a multimedia system with two speakers. You get a smartphone holder that is integrated in the dashboard. You get Bluetooth, a USB port, some control buttons on the steering wheel are standard as well. And you get a small display in front of you. Now you do not get this multimedia screen as standard. You only get this from the comfort and upwards. At the basic version of the car, you only get this smartphone holder. You click in your smartphone and then you can install the Dacia app and then you can use your smartphone to use some different functions on the car. But you do get the buttons on the steering wheel as standard to use some functions in the car. Uh, I do have to say this infotainment system that you get from the comforts and upwards is a really fast infotainment system. I've noticed that uh, before with Dacia models. Uh, it's really fast. It's basically one of the fastest systems out there, but there's a really big reason for that. And that's because it's super simple. There are barely any functions on this system because there are barely any functions on this car. You don't need to set the mood lightning or anything in this infotainment system because there isn't any mood lightning in this car. However, you can get a couple of cool new features uh, on Dacia's nowadays. You can get parking sensors, you can get a backup camera, you can get wireless uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now you do get that as standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but then you have to plug it in 
uh, with the USB port, but you can also get it wirelessly as well. So yeah, the infotainment system, I really like it. I don't need a complicated system. So for me, it is perfect. You just press it, it immediately opens, which is just really nice. When you're driving, there are some touch sensitive buttons on the side of it for the volume control and to go to the home menu and just to turn it off completely or go to car settings. You can also control the volume of the car uh, here on the side there are a couple of buttons for volume and also for source select so if you want to listen to fm radio or to bluetooth on your phone now you get a little screen in front of you as standards but you always get two clocks next to each other which are analog clocks for your speedometer and tachometer whichever version you go for so never a fully digital gauge cluster in the center you get also a couple of physical buttons uh, for the climate controls which is really handy because well you can just find these buttons without having to look for them so if you want to set your temperature you don't have to do that on the screen you can just use these round buttons here in the center so overall the interior is a pretty nice place to be i have to say it looks a lot better than how interiors used to look like with dachas now obviously if you're going to scratch every surface yeah you will find a lot of hard plastics but that is to be expected especially for car at this price point. All right, let's talk motor options. Like I said in the beginning, there are two power outputs with either 100 and 110 horsepower. And later on in 2023, there will also be a hybrid version of this car. That car will have the powertrain from the Clio and the Captura uh, hybrid, uh, which has 140 horsepower. That car will have an automatic transmission this version will not. Either with 100 and 110 horsepower, you cannot get an automatic transmission. So you might wonder, what is the difference between uh, the 100 and 110 horsepower motors? Well, they are both one liter three cylinders, but one of them runs on petrol and the other one, nope, doesn't run on diesel. It runs on petrol and LPG. That's the bi-fuel version. And it's a really interesting uh, version, especially at this moment, because as we all know, uh, fuel prices are going through the roof, are skyrocketing. So LPG is a lot cheaper. So this car is a lot cheaper to run. Now, obviously it kind of depends on where you live. Uh, in some countries, LPG isn't even available, but in most countries it's a lot cheaper than petrol fuel. So this car has a little LPG button next to it, built in, because well, the entire system is built in at the factory. Uh, if you press it, uh, the car will switch over to another fuel. Uh, now I'm going over to LPG. The car doesn't stutter or anything. You barely notice it. Well, you don't notice it at all, to be honest. There's also not like a power drop or anything. Uh, the only thing that you will notice is that you, well, you don't have to pay as much for fuel anymore. What is also pretty cool about this biofuel LPG version is the range that you can get. If you have both the petrol and the LPG tank filled up, this car has a range up to a thousand kilometers, which is just really odd to see in a car, which is just basically still a petrol fueled car. Uh, usually you can only get a range like that in like a diesel car. So it is really weird to see. I got the, my tripometer here in front of me, this little gauge cluster that shows me that I've got 900 kilometers of range left. What you also have to know about this bag fuel version is that the maintenance cost and the maintenance intervals are exactly the same as with the petrol version. So you might wonder, is 100 or even 110 horsepower sufficient for a car like this? It's a really big car. You can seat seven people. Is it enough? Now I would say yes, it's definitely enough just to follow traffic. Of course, this isn't the fastest car and most Dachas aren't the fastest cars out there. And obviously you're not buying a family SUV with three rows of seating to do some sporty driving, but it's definitely fast enough to you know follow the traffic uh, I haven't found any problems with that. Now you might say uh, that's really easy to say because you're the only one sitting in this car. Now that is true. If I had like a rugby team in this car of seven adults, uh, this car will definitely be a little bit slower than it is right now, but it still will be sufficient power just to get going and to get from point A to point B without any troubles. What also helps is that it isn't really a very heavy car. Obviously it looks quite big. It can seat seven people but it doesn't even weigh 1200 kilos, a bit less than that, which isn't that bad for such a big car. Uh, they also used uh, aluminum for the engine, so that doesn't weigh that much. They haven't used that much sound insulation. Uh, that also saves a couple of kilos. Now, obviously you can hear that. Uh, I'm not driving on the highway right now, uh, but when I did, I could notice a little bit more sound coming from the wheels and from the outside. 
uh, it isn't that bad it isn't really that annoying and and I do have to admit I am looking for a couple of downsides on this car because you would imagine that a car at this price point that is so big there must be some cost savings that must be really annoying but so far I haven't really found them except maybe the sound insulation at higher speeds isn't like well what you're used to in let's say a Volkswagen or an Opel but it would definitely not be a reason for me to not buy this car so how is the driving experience in the Jugger? It's actually a pretty pleasant car to drive. Uh, you get way more feedback from the steering wheel than I expected to. And the car feels a lot well smaller than it actually is. It's a pretty nimble car, I would say. Of course, the dimensions are still pretty big, but it doesn't really feel like a big and heavy car. So conclusions overall, uh, as everybody knows, Dacia offers very good value for money. You get a lot of car for your money. And in this particular case, you really get a lot of car for your money because it's just a very big car for 15,000 euros, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. Uh, so that's a really good proposition. Now, obviously you do get what you pay for, but I would say you get more than what you pay for. Yes, there's a lot of hard plastic in the interior. That is to be expected. The fit and finish isn't like you get in a BMW, also not what you get in a Volkswagen or an Opel or a Renault, uh, but it's not that far off from that. It's still very nice to look at. Uh, you also get a lot of plastic in a basic uh, Volkswagen or Renault. It isn't much of a difference compared to that. And there isn't any competition that offers such a big car for such a low price. Uh, the driving experience is nice as well. And especially this biofuel LPG motor option makes this car a lot more interesting uh, because of the current prices of petrol. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.